Hello, you lucky punters. You fancy another little flutter on the David Mead project? Well, here's the hot favourite now, David Mead. Is that an L? L? <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, my God! David plays games with the human mind, and when his gambles pay off, the results can be staggering. It's crazy. That's awesome. insane. How do you do it? <laughs> Hi! <laughs> Trouble is, when David gets an idea in his head, he's totally prepared to risk it all. I like to push things to the very limit, which is terrifying for me, but the payoff can be worth it. Roll up, roll up, you lucky people. Dear oh lord, David obviously fancies himself as a Mr. Top Spiv, on the lookout for a couple of marks, ready to risk it for a biscuit. Watch out, you muppets. This is a mug's game because not everything is what it seems with David Mead. It's a simple game of what I call one card Monte. I'm gonna place one card on the table and all the participant needs to do is guess which card is sitting there. Now that's gonna seem impossible to them. That's gonna seem like a one in 52. Hopefully though, they'll win. David is ducking and diving out on the street. He's looking for some random players to join him in a little game of chance to risk more than they can afford. Now in a moment, I'm going to ask you to make a guess as to what you think this card is. But Perry, it's only a 1 in 52, so you know the odds aren't really stacked in your favour. The chances of you getting this right are very, very slim. Yeah. So this is a big risk. But what's your guess? King of Hearts. King of Hearts. Now you haven't gambled anything on this? No. Which is such a shame, <laughs> such a shame. So I'm going to ask Aoife to make your first guess of what this card might be. Three of Hearts. Three of Hearts. You've actually did really, really well. Really well. Now, how does that feel that you got that right? <laughs> we should put money on it now. <laughs> Phase one is simple. I want to build up their confidence. The minute that their confidence is built up, their perception of risk changes and they'll be willing to risk everything, regardless of how likely they are of winning. No, David isn't a bookie. He's a bookworm. And you can bet your bottom dollar he's using his special skills to control these odds. His main skill is mentalism, the art of mind manipulation. And today, he's making people take risks. What I want to build in them is supreme self-confidence, the idea that they can't lose. The minute that they're there, they're exactly where I need them. Now, it's only a 1 in 52. There's no way that you could know what that is. What do you think the chances are of you getting this right? 1 out of 52. Yeah, you're right, 1 out of 52. It's really odd. Now, I'm going to ask you now for the first time, with all of these odds stacked against you, Tasha, what's your guess? Um, Jack of Diamonds. Jack of Diamonds. It's a really slim chance that you could get this right. It's so slim you probably wouldn't gamble anything on it, would you? No. <laughs> that was really stacked against you there, Tasha. Everything was stacked against you, but you got it right. So I'll tell you what, do you feel confident after the last time? Oh, I. OK, well, look, do you want to gamble some stuff on it? What do you got there? What, what do you got of value? A phone. Phone, I'll have your phone, yeah. I can't believe David's techniques are working. She's risking it all with nothing to win. It seems she's lost the plot when judging the odds. <laughs> right, give me the chain. Give me the chain. I'll take the chain. Why not? We've got a combined value here of about £15. As I said, I like you, so I want to make it easy for you. Right. If you name any card that isn't this card, then you're a winner. <laughs> OK? So all you need to do is name any card that isn't that card. So, Tasha, go ahead. Three of clubs. OK. Now, everything was stacked in your favour. You needed to name any card but the three of clubs. Sorry, Tasha! Oh, look at this! King Ling Ling! <laughs> OK, you made your point, David. Game over. Now give the stuff back, please. I guess I'm not the, the, the first time, it always gives you a wee bit to do it the second time, because you always get that wee bit luckier. <laughs> it's always better second time round. <laughs> OK, then. Back to the job in hand. You know, it's a little bit like the lottery. Because you know that you've got very little chance of winning, you only really play one or two pounds a week. If you knew that you had maybe a one in ten chance of winning, you might pay 50 pounds a week, because your odds of winning are massively increasing. I want to take them to that same state, that point at which they feel there is virtually no risk. Now, the odds here are dramatically stacked in your favour. What is your second guess? Six of clubs. The six of clubs? Yeah. Sorry, Aoife. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you for taking part. <laughs> all you need to do is name any one of these cards that isn't this one. Seven of diamonds. The seven of diamonds. Yeah. Sorry, Perry. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you for your... Uh... Oh, yeah. I put my, my purse, my bank card, my passport, my phone, everything on it and he caught me out and I could have lost everything, so don't risk it. <laughs>
Playing with risk and the odds has given David a new idea. Always beat the odds. That would be an amazing thing to pull off. To win every time, no matter what the risk. I'll bet David reckons he has an answer for it all. He probably thinks he's got some risk-beating system. I'm fascinated by how we perceive risk, but more specifically, how that perception affects the amount of risk that we're willing to take. Odds are very confusing things. The fact is, we don't really have the capability to easily understand what a set of odds means in real terms. Professional card counters in places like Las Vegas know how to capture all of the probability and the odds. It's with that information that they make what look like really risky decisions. But the fact is, they're not risky. They're really well-informed decisions, and that's why they reap huge financial rewards. I'd like to use all of my skills as a mentalist to see if they can allow me to take even bigger risks when I know all of the variables and all of the odds. David never ceases to amaze, and he's going to treat us all to a little bit of his favourite sport. Who knew? I've chosen a sport that's a real passion for me. I've been playing it for years now. Apparently, David is a keen competitor in one of the most popular and traditional national pastimes. Statisticians talk about statistics and probability, but gamblers, they talk about odds. And I'm really interested in odds today. I wonder if I study all of the variables, and I mean everything, the equipment, my opponent, the room, the temperature, even the lighting. Can that increase my odds of winning at a game of skill? Uh-oh, blimey. And there's David's first risk of the day. Oh, no. What's he up to? All right, don't overdo it. I've chosen my participant for this test very carefully. The reason I've selected him is he's really competitive. A little bit like me. He's going to be playing a game of tiddlywinks. Tiddly Winks, I might have known. Tiddly Winks is the future. I'm just excited to see what's going to happen. The rules of this test are really simple. He's got a bowl of four or five hundred Tiddly Winks of various different colours. And by the way, the regulation colours. I'm not an amateur. He can choose any Tiddly Winks he like and play for as long as he likes, chipping them into the bowl. And he can stop whenever he wishes. I just hope that by knowing all of the variables, I can beat him at this game, because this is going to be tough. Let the Tiddly Winks Begin. David understands the odds. He's confident his calculated risk on the outcome will pay off. If not, he'll lose his shirt. Although, that might not be a bad thing. You're going to play tiddlywinks for as long as you like. Whenever you feel like you're done, just say, I'm done, or, you know. But before that, I want to give you my, uh, my lucky tiddlywink. Go, do me a favour, put that in your fist, nice and tight, and put that inside your pocket for me, inside your pocket, anywhere that you like. We'll come back to that. Uh, that's for luck. That's, that will hopefully make your job a little bit easier. These uh, are the rest of my set of lucky tiddlywinks, but I'll keep them here for you. Do you think I need luck? I David? think you need luck. You I mean, I need... look at you. <laughs> <laughs> you see my style here, David? This is an unorthodox style. Now, between you and me, there's a camera set up under the table to check there's no funny business and David doesn't chuck in a few That's cheeky it. extras. You're a very proficient flicker. I ain't telling you. I'm genuinely impressed with how well you're doing. OK. Just as well you've got safety glasses this on there, David. This could be a failure. A la, 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 la. Rules of the game. Steaming can keep tiddlywinking until he's decided he's had enough. Ah, you actually hit me in the face. OK, are you done? I'm out. Hmm. Let's see how you've done. Now, you have got here... Let's look at the total. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 in is, is genuinely impressive. And you could have went on as long as you liked. Mm -hmm. Do yes. you have my lucky tiddlywink there that I, that I gave you at the start? I do indeed, yes. Can I see it? I'm conscious of where you've put it. It may be a little sweaty. Put it down. Do you just want to count it for me, Steve? Go over there and double check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15. Yes. Whenever you're ready, Steve, um, I'd like you to look at the other side of my lucky tiddlywink. OK, turn it over. <laughs> 15. <laughs> Could have stopped whenever you liked. Yes. David wouldn't risk a thing without a few more trusty lucky tiddlywinks beside him. Let's hope they don't let him down now. Green, red, blue and yellow. Whenever you're ready, 
Uh, turn over the yellow one for me. There's going to be a number on this, isn't there? What is it, three? <laughs> and how many yellows? Yep, definitely three yellow. Three there. And uh, how many blues? Turn over the blue. <laughs> I think you see where this is going. You can turn over the last two. <laughs> three. My final <laughs> wink. <laughs> Three, four, three, five. Incredible. That's just blowing me away. I had the lucky chip in my pocket the whole time, and I didn't really know where he was going with it. And I will go home today trying to work it out, but that's why I was at the other end of the table. Thank goodness that worked. The fact is that human beings are naturally really bad at judging odds. That's why bookies are still in business. But people like me, mentalists, I like to exploit those misunderstandings. Uh-oh, looks like the biggest risk David could take right now is to get too overconfident. The trouble with all risk, it's addictive. And David's got the bug. He wants to take bigger and bigger risks. I'd like to try something big. I'd like to try something with virtually impossible, maybe even improbable odds. I mean, the chances of a meteor hitting Earth right now is one in a thousand, but I think I can do better than that. Don't worry, the nutter can't put his hands on a meteor. He's going to use a dart. And he's found another reckless chancer, I mean, daring participant, to help him in his latest caper. I'm going to give my participant the opportunity to choose any location in the United Kingdom. And when I say any, I mean any. There are tens of thousands. My job is to see if I can predict it. Hello, Joanne. David is going to risk it all with Joanne, who will throw the dart. To increase the risk, he's picked someone who isn't even a dart player. OK, all right. Oi, that's no laughing matter, Missy. Sometimes I think that people say that I'm not confident about an experiment because I'm just doing that for dramatic effect. I can honestly say what I'm about to try is the riskiest thing I have ever done. I'm going to take a bit of a risk today. OK. In front of you, we okay. have a huge map of the UK and Ireland. I'm going to have you choose one location on that map. And how we're going to do that is I'm going to give you a dart in a moment. <laughs> so uh, you're going to throw that down. It's going to land on a page. That's going to be your chosen page. OK. But before we do that, do me a favour. I'd like your autograph. If you could just sign that for me nice and big. Hmm. Lovely penmanship. Beautiful. Look at that Y. Excellent. Okay. Now, Joanne. I am going to go down there and mix up this map. The okay. reason I want to do that is so that you can't aim for somewhere that you know or somewhere that you've gone on holidays. So okay. you just entertain yourself for a couple of minutes. Okay, All right. yeah. And by the way, as I'm doing this, please keep an eye on me to make sure that okay. I don't switch any pages. Um, but I don't want you to keep track of where all the locations are. I want this to be super, super random. Uh, let me see. I don't want you to have any specific location in mind. Are you thinking of anywhere? If you are, try and block it out of your head. No, I'm not thinking of anywhere. Excellent. I think that will just about do. Joanne, are you happy that this is nicely mixed up? Yeah. Brilliant. So, Joanne, okay. do you think there any way you could follow or track any of those locations now? No. OK. I've made a video for you, Joanne, and it was only for you. And I made it weeks ago. OK. So, let's go ahead and play the video. OK. Hello there. Thank you for coming and helping me. What's your name? Joanne. A little bit meaningless to me, given that I've recorded this message for you weeks in advance. Sorry, ignore him, Joanne. He's very rude. Hello, David. How are you? I'm really well, thanks. Thank you. I think you've uh, put on a little weight there. Anyway, never mind. That's awkward. Um, actually, let's try something. Think of a number, David. Um, 14. Is it 14? <sighs> so talented. So talented. So talented. <laughs> Now, by now, David should have explained to you what's about to happen. In front of you, there should be a jumbled up map. You should also have a dart there. Now, in a moment, you're going to throw that dart, but not yet. You're going to throw that dart anywhere you like towards that map. So whenever you're ready, after I count three, get ready to throw that dart. One, two, three, throw the dart. OK, got a page there. Good shot. So right now, David, go ahead and pick up that page. Chop, chop, come Excuse on, hurry me. up. And oh, by the way, keep an eye on him to make sure that he doesn't try to switch that page. OK, Joanne, keep a good close eye. Now, okay. you have got somewhere with quite a lot of writing. You could have had any of these pages. You've got somewhere with quite a lot of writing, but um, keep a good eye, make sure that I don't try to switch it.
This is exciting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, let me see. Hmm. Now that you've got a page, I want you to take a marker and draw an X anywhere that you like on that page. Now, hopefully, wherever you've marked on that page is close to somewhere or something and not in the middle of the ocean. So right now, for the first time, I'd like you to out loud call out where have you drawn that mark? Fulham. Fulham. Have, yeah. you ever, have you ever been there before or? No. No? Uh, any particular reason why you chose it or, or was it random? Random. So you said Fulham. Okay, mm -hmm. so Fulham. Fulham. I have this uh, envelope that you signed at the very start. Inside this envelope is a piece of paper. Go ahead and open it up, Joanne. Now, if that has worked, David should just have revealed to you the precise place that you selected randomly from all of those pages and all of those places. Um, and just in case you think that he has done anything really funny or cheated, I'm going to take this and seal it up in an envelope. And I'm going to seal it for you. Page. No way! Weeks, weeks ago! No way! Weeks ago! So that you know that the me next to you isn't trying to cheat. <laughs> <laughs> in the meantime, though, I've got a plane to catch. From <laughs> Fulham. <laughs> no way! <laughs> of all the places you could have chosen, even on that page alone that you selected from all of those pages, an atlas of the entire UK and Ireland, you chose the one place, Fulham. I can't believe you did that. That's incredible. I'm just amazed. I'm just, I'm actually, I'm speechless. I threw a dart, chose a random place on a map, and he's done a video before, and he's in Fulham. I, I can't describe the feeling, can't describe it. Absolutely amazing. The funny thing about this game is that I can't believe that it didn't go wrong. I can't believe it. I mean, it is so improbable. The odds of her getting the one place that I had been in weeks ago um, it's just improbable. It's so small, it's incalculable. That was undoubtedly the biggest risk I've ever taken in all of the games or experiments I've ever done. I honestly can't believe it. But believe it or not, that's not the end of it. These jelly rings in boxes are not to satisfy David's sweet tooth. Oh, no. He's become addicted to risk and needs to up the dose, this time adding a stronger ingredient to the mix. The level of risk that we feel is directly related to the meaningfulness of that which we're risking. And so the risk seems far greater when we're risking something that we care about. And that's what I want to play with today. But what have jelly ring has got to do with emotional risk? Aha, David wants to know what it's like to risk the things you really love. And he has chosen a couple that have everything to lose. Nice to meet you. Yeah, how are you keeping? I'm Brian. Brian, isn't it? Yes, Brian. How's your tricks? Are you nervous? <laughs> nervous? Why were you nervous about? Don't know. I understand. You've gotten engaged, is that right? Yeah. Can I see if you got the ring? Oh, lovely. That is beautiful. I won't ask you how much it costs, but I will ask you. Can I take that? Mm, okay. A little bit wary? Yeah. Don't worry. Oh, about so that's his game. You don't want to risk that one. Okay. I'm really excited about this one. I've got 450 ring boxes inside all of those. I've placed a jelly ring because that's the type of big spender I am. I've got two participants here. They're engaged. I'm going to borrow their engagement ring and hide it in one of these boxes. And then we're going to play a simple game of risk and all they need to do is find their ring. For David, this is just a game of the ring, but this happy couple are risking so much more. Lindsay had said out exactly what type of ring she wanted. So I'd hunted high and low, high and low, trying to find which was the nicest one. The ring, it means, it means quite a lot to me because obviously I know Ryan spent a lot of money and went out of his way to pick the perfect ring. So for him to take it off me, it's, it feels like there's something missing. So the game is really simple. It only uses 450 boxes, which has taken me hours to lay out here. 450 jelly rings that are all inside. It will use their engagement ring as well. I'll be popping that inside one of the boxes. They won't know which. But also, I've got my little friend, the shovel, and my big friend over there. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is an industrial shredder. And what David has failed to mention is that the groom-to-be is going to be shoveling all those boxes into this bad boy. One of those boxes could have his fiance's precious ring in it. He must be off his head. I enjoy taking a risk. It gets a wee bit of adrenaline going, a bit of excitement, a wee bit of being unsure. <laughs> Brave words indeed. Now, we can't show you where the ring's hidden. That would spoil it. But once David has hidden the ring in one of these boxes and all the lids are closed, there are no external clues as to which one's got it. The future missus is definitely not keen. 
I don't know. He's took my ring and that's a big step to take somebody's ring off him and not know whether you're gonna get it back or not. Four hundred and fifty ring boxes. And I believe, given the great risk that you've taken given me your ring, he will find exactly where your engagement ring is. So how do you feel? Do you feel confident about it? Mm, nervous, but I think he'll do it. Okay, okay, with well, supreme confidence there. What about yourself, Ryan? You feeling pretty good about this? Yeah, feeling, feeling good about it, yeah. Okay, well, I want you to go ahead now and pick a box, and it can be any one that you like, and bring it over and we'll have a look inside. Rather than open them all up just to prove there is a jelly ring in all 450 boxes, Ryan chooses one randomly. I bet Lindsay's hoping that's going to be hers before the nightmare's even started. Okay, you got one, Ryan, that random? Got it, yeah. Random, random yeah, okay. Yeah. No, I don't want to touch it, but uh, go ahead and open up and show us what's inside. There we go, inside Very we have... nice. Inside we have a jelly ring because I'm obviously a pretty classy guy. Now that is, Lindsay, if this goes wrong, that can be your, uh, your booby prize. Great. <laughs> um, actually, you can keep that for me. And uh, again, if this goes wrong, that is my gift to you. So, right now, I am going to ask you, Ryan, to eliminate all of these boxes but one. Oh, look at him playing around. He loves this, doesn't he? Ever seen one of these before? Yeah. Yes, Lindsay, that's a shredder. David seems to be enjoying this far too much. When we're operating the machine, we're going to need to keep these on because safety first, DIY second. Uh, Lindsay, if you'd like to go ahead now and pop back into the room. Before you go, we maybe give Ryan a wee good luck kiss. What about me? Well, I meant Ryan, but you can have one if you want. OK. In you go, Lindsay. I don't know if Lindsay's been put in that room for her safety or Ryan and David's. I'm not feeling very happy. I'll be happy whenever I see Meringue again. So, Ryan, we have a pretty big room here. I'm going to divide the room into thirds. Would you like to eliminate this one third and shovel it into the cruncher? Or would you like to eliminate the two thirds over there and throw it into the cruncher? I'll eliminate this third. OK, you want to eliminate this third? OK. Ryan's not taking a risk too early getting rid of a third. Let's hope his hunch as to where the ring is might be right. Would it be bad to say I'm enjoying this? Is that bad? Well, you're enjoying it or I'm enjoying it? <laughs> Are you enjoying it, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I'm enjoying it. OK. I'm just a wee bit dubious about what's going to happen. Um, that machine's scaring me. He's on. He's down. To be honest with you, I heard something that was a little bit like metal, but we'll... We'll continue. David said that he thought he heard metal going through the machine. Is he being serious? I don't know. So you can either keep this side and eliminate that side, or you can keep this side and eliminate that side. It's important that you know that the choice is totally up to you. I'm going to eliminate this side. Eliminate this side, you sure? Yeah. Okay, Ryan, go ahead, shovel them up. I can't believe this bloke is so sure of himself. You're happy these are your random choices? Yes, yeah, some of them in. He's having a whale of a time. Talk about boys and their toys. There's a girl who's feeling well left out of the fun. Oh, David, you're ruining your tea. Lindsay is not impressed. They just look like they're having fun and they're not worrying about anything. Whenever it's my engagement ring at stake. Worst case scenario, what would Lindsay say? I don't know, I think we'll have a bit of silence for a while. But, because this was my idea and... It was your idea to come on the show? Yeah. Something tells me if Ryan shreds Lindsay's ring, he's going to be losing more than his valuables. If we were to divide it up like that, which half would you like to eliminate? This half. Moment of truth, mate. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's dawned on Ryan what he's risking. Only eight boxes to go, and Lindsay seems to be feeling all the pressure. Don't know what's going to happen. He better have it right. Don't know how he's going to get it right, but he better have it right. Only two boxes left. 
Come on now, Ryan, take care. This is your future happiness at stake. This might be a decision you should consider carefully. Oops. Or just chuck it in there like I'm up here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you hear Maple? Did you hear Maple? Where did it throw out, Ryan? It was a lid of a can. Ryan's risking everything on this last box. Okay. It's where Lindsay's ring has to be. Um, Happy ever after. Here goes. So, your choice, Ryan. Do you want to go ahead and open it? I'll take the, I'll take the shovel. Oh, no. Oh, no. Was it this particular ring that you liked, Lindsay? This one's... Yeah. Whose idea was it to come on the show? Ryan's. At least you've got your uh, booby prize that you, that you chose at the start. Mm -hmm. um, is, would that go in any way to replace your ring, Lindsay? No. Is that the first one that you picked? First one that you decided to keep and put in your pocket? Yeah. Just pull up the ring. <coughs> Thank God <laughs> that worked. Now that was the first one that you gravitated towards out of all of them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing about risk is that when it's the most meaningful, it can be the most terrifying. But how do you feel? A lot better now. A lot better, <laughs> yeah. It's back on my fingers where it belongs. It's maybe the slightest bit of doubt was starting to come into my mind, but I had full confidence that at the end of the day the ring was not, not going to be shredded, so I wasn't quite as nervous as Lindsay. <laughs> that would be Ryan Oliver. <laughs> He's very confident and cocky sometimes. <laughs> Experiences like this are why I love being a mentalist. That was absolutely incredible. I think it shows, to me at least, that our perception of risk is massively misguided and misinformed. But if we were all just to take a little bit more time and study the odds, well, then maybe we'd all be winners. <laughs> Comedy from the flat over on BBC Three next. Steve's not the first person I'd take a medical problem to, but Laura's fiance Paul does. Him and her in a couple of minutes.